here and welcome back to Nelly Creek for the final tie in 2021. So this morning it's uh, December 31st which means it's New Year's Eve. This is going to be a very short, very quick but um, hopefully a very good video so let's get started with a few updates around the farm here. So as you can see over here we've got the yellow air compressor which I didn't show in the um, equipment tour video and also the Nissan here. Now Dad and Daniel they did a little bit of work to the Nissan over the past couple of weeks and that has to do with fixing the frame. What I didn't mention in that video is that well the Nissan as you can quite clearly see it is old it's a 1994 it's a QJ I think. I don't know, someone correct me in the comment section. But as you can see under there, you can see that we did some form of st stability work to it. Because with utes, this may also apply to some pickup trucks as well. Between the main sort of like pickup truck of the part of the ute, which is the cab, the engine and the front axle, that's one part of the ute and then Usually with utes, it's split right down the middle of the actual here, right down the middle of the frame, so you can put a different tray or something on the back. For this specific example, we've got a steel tray with the toolbox and the crane and the air compressor on the back. The problem with this particular ute when we bought it was it was a little bit run down and the frame would often bend. Now, because we're moving to a different farm this coming year and we're going to be starting shifting stuff very soon. We're going to still need the Nissan because it has four wheel drive and it will be able to get across the sandy country quite easily. Problem with that was the frame was cracked. So that meant we had to weld it together in order to stop it from going over a bump and having the thing split in half through the down axle. So of course over my Christmas break they did that and we also got the air compressor on the back because well as many of you know we are also sheep farmers as well alongside cropping and well a couple people may say why bother fixing a pump when you've sold a farm and you've bought another one. Well we, we still got sheep on here. The thing about that is when you've got sheep for example they um need a lot of attention and when you still got your sheep on here before you shift farms and the water troughs stop working that's a big problem because sheep need water and when you have um, a farm in Western Australia like Nelly Creek for example it gets flipping hot for the past couple week or so over Christmas we recorded around 42 to 45 degree heat Celsius um, do the math um, if you want to convert it to Fahrenheit, but it's pretty hot. And when a pump breaks and the sheep don't have any water, it's our job to fix it. So that's what we're doing today. Let's go. Now here is a great example for pumping technology. Over there you can see one of our windmills, or one of the last ones still standing after the cyclone. And over here you can see one of the more later technologies, a solar pump. Now one of the more major differences between windmills and solar pumps is Windmills use, well, the wind to spin the blades around, pumping water from the ground. And that's a system that most farmers in Australia and all across the world have used for many years. But there comes a time when there's little to no wind at all. And climbing up those towers can get pretty difficult. Why do you think we got the cherry picker? 
that's the reason why some people have switched to solar pumps now while these harness the power of the sun and its futuristic technology that will come more apparent in the next couple of years it's electrical and it's a real difficult thing to work out when you've been fixing windmills your whole life this hasn't been up since we put it down mm. and i take it it's been working all that time before it started sucking air uh, uh, well no the other thing was working so mm. and here we have the cause of the issue i do believe this is the thing that drives the whole thing is that right dad so the motor, which Dad is trying to fix off screen here, drives the rotor and this helps to pump water up the pipe and out of the well to one of our water troughs and tank. But the problem with this one, as you can see, it is quite, it is quite rusted out and it is also very difficult to turn. And um, that's because it's seized. And what Dad is trying to do right now, trying to put the new rotor in the motor so the motor can drive the rotor to pump the water through this pipe and off to the tank. Right, so we think we found the problem. We put it back together and we put it back down the hole. Now the only way to truly see if it works is to turn it on and wait. So we found the verdict. It was that truck that's just up there. We have a split in the pipe that has one way go up the hill to the tanks and another one which goes to that truck. Now the float, the float which is the part that I'll show you in a minute, the float has a lot of pressure and because it's cold, it's leaking and more pressure that's put on it, the worst it pressure that's on that the more water flows into that trough and as you can see the trough is already overflowed so that's where we're at drying what we're gonna do we're gonna end the video here thanks for watching everyone and we're gonna end it with epic drone shot